You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, welcome to another fun, quick episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. My name is Rob. Quick, we'll see. Thank you for joining us, episode 915. Appreciate it. How did you get something to rhyme with indeed? We'll see. <laughs> wow. Okay. All right. I'm in. I'm in. Did I'm I in. say indeed in this time? In this one? No, you did not, but you typically do. Yeah, uh, I do. Uh, it's funny. I didn't even notice that you said indeed all the time until Dano was like, good indeed, Paul. And you remember at the at 107 <laughs> of class? Of course Dano you know, would do that. I know. He's, he's a fun one. He is. Anyways, thank you again for joining us. We really do appreciate it. Let's hop right in. Today's question is brought to you by our friends at uh, Fortress UAV. And if you would like to sponsor the show, reach out to Rob. Rob at thedroneu.com. Oh, you didn't just do that, did you? I did. Hmm. All right. Well, so be it. <laughs> Drop me a line. Rob's phone number it's not like is it's 505. <laughs> it's not like it's that hard to figure out. Anyways. Anyway. All right. Hello, everybody. I want to tell you again about our friends over at Fortress UAV. As we've told you before, they're doing a fantastic job of getting drones back in the air that have been crashed or for some other reason are inoperable. So if you've got a drone that fits that bill, you're going to want to check them out at fortressuav.com slash drone you. But you know, they've also got a new program in place. It's called Fortress UAV Protect. This is a nose to tail preventive maintenance program for your drone or your fleet of drones that rivals those of manned aircraft maintenance services, meaning they're going deep to make sure your drone stays in the air and operates effectively. Currently, they're working on Mavic Pros, Phantom 4s, Inspire 1s and 2s, the Matrice 600 series, and the Matrice 200 series. What I like about this idea of having your drones maintained by Fortress UAV is that they have a unique perspective on what maintenance needs to look like because they're fixing them every single day. They're seeing what's going wrong and they know how to preventively maintain against those issues. A few of the points that they're gonna take a look at, they're gonna visually inspect all of the moving parts in your drone. They're gonna inspect wiring. They're gonna clean any dirt and debris that is gathered in your drone. They're gonna run key performance tests. They're gonna upgrade software unless you ask them not to for some reason. And they're gonna calibrate your drone in all the ways that is necessary. And they're gonna replace any consumables that your drone needs to have replaced. And they're gonna do that, of course, based on the drone type that you send in. So guys, check them out if you've got maybe one drone and you just don't have time to take care of the maintenance on a regular basis, or you've got a fleet of drones, you're an organization that has a lot of drones and it's taking way too much time and cost of your people to maintain it. These guys are going to be a great option for you. So again, check them out at fortressuav.com slash drone you. And if you do decide to use their services, put in the coupon code drone you all caps for a 10% discount. We think they can be a big help to you. FortressUAV.com slash drone you. Hey guys, my name is Earl Nottingham in Central Texas, and I sure appreciate your podcast. Uh, you've got some, some great information, and I really depend on you guys. My question is about ground control points. So I have an opportunity to do some construction progress work here, and I'm wondering do you just need to use your ground control points in the initial flight or? Do they need to be used in each subsequent flight? Uh, It would seem that as a construction progress went on, it would would mess up the areas where you may have some of the the GCPs at. So that was just a question I had in mind, and I'd appreciate any thoughts you may have on it. Thank you very much, Earl. Appreciate it. Good question. Um, And we appreciate you. And if you haven't left us a review wherever you listen, please do. We'd really appreciate that. GCPs. Definitely. Um, First of all, if your GCPs are still laid out in the field and you left them there, meaning that the GCPs are still going to be in the imagery in subsequent flights and you already shot those GCPs with RTK or PPK GPS, then the answer to your question is yes, you could just use the GCP information from the first time. But I think it's really important to understand a couple things. 
Number one, if you're at a construction site and you're mapping it over and over again, typically you should just leave your GCPs out in the field, staked out and left there so they don't move. That way you could just pull GPS information one time and then map the area again and again and again and again and again and just use the same GCPs. But if the mats or whatever you're using to mark GCPs moves even an, an inch or a centimeter, then all your data is thrown off. So that's why you need to ensure they're staked down, they don't move. It's really, really, really important. Now, that being said, what should you use as GCPs? How many GCPs should you use? Typically, in, in a site less than 10 acres, you should be using a minimum of five GCPs, and you typically want to spread them out throughout the job site. So think of them as a square, and then you would put your fifth GCP in the middle point of the square. Now, you don't want the, a point from one GCP to the next GCP to really be beyond 500 feet, as then your relative accuracy will go down the further away that your GCPs are from one another if they're further than 500 feet. Didn't know that. In addition, you should also be pulling checkpoints. So you should have your five GCPs and typically two checkpoints. Now, what you use for your GCPs is just as important as what you use for your GPS. Meaning if you're not using a GCP that has a highly contrasting discernible center point, then you're screwing yourself on accuracy over and over again. It's just like why guys who go out and do elevations for volumetrics on a construction site are fundamentally screwed and why the drones are going to take over construction. I mean, how can you literally guarantee an accuracy of a Z-axis point when you're staking something into the ground after you already took the elevation of that said point, and then you're saying, oh, that point is X on the Z-axis when you just captated the ground probably a good centimeter or two. So how are you sure that's really accurate? And that's why drones will take over uh, volumes at construction sites. Among and other reasons. Among yeah. other reasons. But yeah. that accuracy and your accuracy for what you choose for a GCP is just as important. I mean, this is why we went so deep into creating our landing pads with GCPs on them. It's because we wanted to create something that was absolutely perfect for marking GCPs every single time. Now, if you have a site that's larger than 10 acres, you should typically be using five GCPs for every... Uh, I would say 10 to 20 acres that you add. And you also have to ensure that your overlap and imagery from one side to the other is enough when you're covering these larger areas. Luckily, now with Pix4D Capture, we can fly multiple batteries on the same mapping mission, which is not a big deal. But in the past, you used to have to be like, okay, I'll do this as one section, this is one section, this is one section, and ensure that I have good overlap. Now, going back to laying out your GCPs. You want to make sure that you have enough overlap in the imagery of your GCPs. You don't want your GCPs on the edge of the map and then only have a few photos that you're going to be able to choose to mark from, from your data set. You want to make sure that they're inset a little bit from the edges, probably 50 or more feet, to ensure that you have enough photos to choose from in selecting that exact GCP in your map. Hmm. Now. When do you need GCPs? Anytime you want to make accurate linear measurements, anytime you want to make accurate volumetric measurements, or anytime you want to make accurate measurements, period. Now, you can still get good scale measurements with three scale constraints for volumes, but considering how much work that you would do for marking six MTPs and three lines between those and then creating scale constraints, I would rather just pick GCPs because it's easier and it'll be more accurate. You got to think of this as time efficiency. What's really time efficient? Now, if I were him doing construction mapping, I would probably use something like arrow points, even though I really am not a big fan of arrow points. The reason the arrow points work in his situation is that they're left out on the site for the entire duration of construction. They're not going to move. They're durable. They're weatherproof. They are going to get all the information. And if they get run over by a tractor or a forklift, no big deal. And I can say that because I actually ran over one <laughs> with a forklift. With a forklift, no yes, less. Yes. Not even your truck. We wow. have pictures of it. <laughs> that's funny. Oh, it was way heavier than my 8,000 pound truck. Way heavier. Wow, um, that's funny. And I got to say, like, GCPs are necessary for reliable, accurate, high precision mapping. You need to ensure that your GCPs have highly discernible, highly contrasting center points. So when you mark those GCPs in images, you can zoom, 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 enhance, enhance, and pick the one point in that picture that represents the actual center. And if you can't see that one point and you're picking multiple points, how can you ensure that, again, your accuracy is very good? So that one point literally equals one pixel. I mean, that's, It doesn't actually equal one pixel. It it's doesn't. Just, yeah, I've argued with Ongood on this. I'm like, but it's a pixel from the image. And he's like, it's a point because it's 3D, Paul. 
pixel is in 3D. And I'm like, wow, that is that is getting like, technical okay, about this is deep. <laughs> this is really deep. <laughs> wow. So, but I like it how Stan he corrected. Me. corrected. <laughs> yeah, I like it how it corrects me. So he does But he's right. Yeah, I'm not arguing with him. So uh, <laughs> I had not thought about it that way. Anyways, yeah. I didn't know that. In fact, that's why I hadn't thought about it that way. Carry on. True. Uh, <laughs> no, I mean GCPs are absolutely necessary for any high precision mapping period. But the point is because he's asking, do I use them just the first time or multiple oh. times after? So, but well, you can't, I, you did, but I just, I'm just clarifying. You can't pick them up and then do it again. Yeah, you can't. That doesn't work. It, correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If he were, let's say he were to lay the GCPs down, shoot GPS on them and come back and try to lay the GCPs back in the same place. Yeah. Right. Good luck. Yeah. That's not going to work. Not going so to So only work. if you can leave them there. Yes, very, very, very important. Um, also, I would say whenever you are choosing your GCPs, we already talked about uh, lateral distances. The other thing that you should do is put your GCPs at varying elevations. Very hmm. important because that's going to help correct your Z-axis, which is typically the most inaccurate axis when mapping. So what if you used five and you leave five there? So you mentioned one in each corner and then one in the middle and it doesn't work to keep the one in the middle there, can you keep using the the four? You don't have to have all five the entire time, right? Say that again? So we talked about setting your five GCPs mm -hmm. on, let's just say it's 10 acres, and then leaving those there for future mm -hmm. measurements mm -hmm. or flights, mm -hmm. missions, whatever you want to call it. But let's just say a couple months, three months down the road, the middle one of the four, for example, can no longer be seen or used. I would that probably just redo the whole thing uh, because if it had moved at all for whatever reason, what could you not just use the four that are still there? What guarantee do I have that the four that are still there haven't moved at all? Well, I mean, you could always make just, that argument though, but I'm just saying you know the four are still there, but it's just the fifth. Could you get away with just using the four and ignore the fifth? If it was a smaller, yeah, yeah, you could, but you're not feeling comfortable with it though. No. Okay. Well, that answers it. Just think about it. If I add. A fifth GCP, how many triangles can I make between the five versus how many True. triangles can I make between the four? Yeah. More. A lot more. Bada bing. I thought you were a math wizard. I was trying to figure out how many more triangles. Oh, you want to know, like, the number? No, no, no. Oh, gosh. <laughs> yeah, all day. <laughs> Call on, God. <laughs> anyway, all right, guys, on that bombshell, that is going to do it for us today. If you have a question about mapping, business, anything in the drone industry, the reauthorization, legal stuff, or anything else that's going on, please go to Ask a Drone You and upload your question and check out our upcoming episodes from New York, which I'm headed to the airport right now. So we'll see you in New York City. My name is Paul. My name is Rob. You're listening to Ask Drone You.